Welcome, everyone. My name is Omari Wooden with the U.S. Census Bureau. I'd like to welcome everyone listening into today's podcast, The Hidden Gems of Economic Surveys, where we're going to discuss economic business data, specifically annual data from the Annual Retail Trade Survey. Many of you know the U.S. Census Bureau measures America's people, places, and economy. We provide a wide range of data to help businesses in your area succeed and grow, and to help you make data-driven decisions. We conduct surveys and release data monthly, quarterly, and annually, as well as an economic census and census of governments every five years, and other periodic reports. We provide data on various sectors of the economy, including construction, international trade, manufacturing, wholesale trade, retail trade, and services. We could probably be here all day to get into all of the information and resources we have available for you. But today, we're focusing on the Annual Retail Trade Survey, a current annual survey also known as ARTS. I would like to introduce Ian Thomas, who is the Assistant Division Chief over Retail and Wholesale Trade Sectors in our Economy-Wide Statistics Division. Welcome, Ian. Thanks, Amari. Good to be here. Glad to have you here. Today, we'll be focusing on an annual survey, but in my introduction, I mentioned monthly, periodic, and a five-year census for both economic and government data. As a background, What's the difference between an economic indicator, an annual survey, and a five-year census program? Generally, for most sectors, the indicators annual and five-year census programs work together to measure a given part of the economy. For example, the indicator survey provides the timeliest information, but isn't always at the finest level of detail as far as geography or products. The annual survey adds more details such as adding information on expenses or payroll or products but on a more delayed basis. And then the five-year census serves as the foundation for many of our programs due to the comprehensive coverage it provides across products, industries, and geographies, but because of that granularity, it takes the most time to process and release. Okay, that helps for background, and is a good distinction between the different types of programs. The longer the time, the larger the sample size, the more detail can be provided. The more timely, it's a smaller sample size, and it's more of a snapshot of the industry. Fair enough. But today, we'll be focusing on retail. And when I hear retail, I'm thinking about local retailers in my community, like a local boutique, or even some of the national chains like Best Buy to Men's Warehouse or Target. Is that fair, or does retail cover more than local stores and stores that could be found in shopping malls? That's the common way people think about retail, but it covers so much more. Retail covers everything from the traditional sale of merchandise at your favorite sporting goods store at the mall to purchasing your favorite vintage records at an online auction website. Retail even covers the home delivery of heating oil or propane. Really? I would have never thought about heating oil and propane. Okay, okay, so I'm getting a little ahead of myself before we even discuss the survey. So... You oversee retail and wholesale trade, and one of the programs you mentioned that you oversee is the Annual Retail Trade Survey, ARTS. Honestly, that's probably one of the easier government acronyms that I can get used to, so I appreciate that for this podcast. Tell me more about the program. Sure, Amari. ARTS, or the Annual Retail Trade Survey, covers employee businesses that are classified in the retail trade sector, Nates 44 and 45. The North America Industry Classification System, better known as NAITS, is the standard used by federal statistical agencies in classifying business establishments for the purpose of collecting, analyzing, and publishing statistical data related to the U.S. business economy. ARTS covers 12 NAITS subsectors, or three-digit NAITS codes, and produce national estimates of total annual sales, e-commerce sales, sale taxes, end of year inventory, purchases, total operating expenses, and gross margins for retail businesses located in the United States. That's a lot. Yes, that is a lot. Arts provide estimates that are more timely than those generated via the economic census, which is a periodic program that collects data every five years in years ending in two and seven, and more detailed than those produced through the advanced monthly and monthly retail trade surveys, which are conducted each month. 
Arts is a mandatory survey that has been conducted annually since 1951. Additionally, in collection years ending in two and seven, the survey also generates detailed operating expenses that was formerly part of the business expense supplement. Okay, so when talking about industries, what are some of the industries that are included in arts? I mentioned arts covers 12 subsectors that includes industries in health and personal care stores, gasoline stations, that's in its release, and vending and direct selling, that's also in its release. Wait a minute. Gas stations, vending, and direct selling are considered retail? Sales from industries and vending machine operators and direct selling are included in Nate's subsector 454, non-store retailers. Establishments in this subsector include mail order houses, vending machine operators, home delivery sales, electronic shopping, and direct sale of products such as home heating oil dealers, for example. Sounds very comprehensive and informative. We do so much online through e-commerce and online purchases, it's great to see that the U.S. Census Bureau can provide that level of detail. How do people or organizations use this data? Internal to the Census Bureau, ART serves as a benchmark for the estimates produced from the Monthly Retail Trade Survey, MRTS. Government agencies, such as the Bureau of Economic Analysis, uses the estimates to derive industry output for their input-output accounts for the gross domestic product. The Bureau of Labor Statistics used the data as input to its producer price index and in developing productivity measurements. Private businesses used the estimates in computing business activity indexes. Other government agencies and businesses use this information for market research, product development, and business planning to gauge the current trends of the economy. So now that you've blown my mind with gas stations and vending machines, what is not captured in this data that sometimes data users would assume is included. Yes, there's always a catch. Estimate of food service firms, restaurants for example, are no longer collected part of arts. Data for that industry are now collected and published through the service annual survey that began with the 2016 survey year. That's interesting, because I would have thought restaurants would have been found in arts. How about the geography? Data users often would like to see state-level data like what is found in the economic census. Currently, arts is only published at the national level. However, we are looking at potential ways to publish state-level data in the future for retail. This is an excellent background on what's captured and what's not. At the time we recorded this, you just put out the release for the 2020 arts data on January 13, 2022. What did that report show? The 2020 report showed a 3.1% year-over-year growth in total retail sales from 2019. Other notable industry highlights in the release includes the electronic shopping and mail order houses, Nate's 4541 sales increased 35.2% from 2019. Grocery store sales, Nate's 4451 increased 9.4% from 2019. Gasoline stations, Nate's 447 sales, decreased 16.6% from 2019. And motor vehicles and part dealers, Nate's 441 sales decreased 2.4% from 2019. That's pretty interesting, and it makes sense in our current environment. Many users like to see historical data to view trends over time. I think you mentioned arts has data back to the 1950s. How far back does arts go? I mentioned earlier that arts was first collected in 1951. You know, on our website, we have reports available as far back as 1952. In general, with each annual release, we provide the current data of collection and historical data as far back as 1992, depending on the content, such as sales and inventories, for example. I'm old enough to remember going into music stores and buying CDs on their release date. Same with DVDs. Some of my younger coworkers laugh that I have a DVD collection, but I digress. Um, have you noticed any interesting trends in the data? In general, e-commerce has been one of the most interesting trends in the data we have. We started measuring this data in 1998, and now as of 2020, 20 plus years later, e-commerce has grown from $5 billion in 1998 to $815.4 billion in 2020. We've also noticed a decline in sales at bookstores, Nate's 451211, $6.2 billion in 2020 compared to $15.2 billion in 2010. Wow, that's significant. That makes sense. I can recall certain bookstores that were titans in the industry, 
And now it's just easier to either download the book on your phone or just buy it outright online. The ability to look back 30 years at the retail industry is impressive. There are retail industries today that have changed tremendously in the past 30 years. Looking forward, what's on the horizon for arts? Does your area have any improvements or changes coming up? The staff is constantly working to provide more useful and timely data. We continue to develop efficiencies that enable us to accelerate our release date, now releasing 13 months after the reference period versus 15 months. Our goal is to mail out and publish data the same year. That would be superb. So many data users are always interested in seeing more timely data. Sorry I interrupted, um, but what else do you have planned? I know this isn't as recent, but we did produce a supplemental e-commerce table back in 2017, which continues to be a favorite with our data users even now. Fair, but there's still important relevance for that data. Yes, relevancy is still there given the continued growth in e-commerce. Thanks for this great overview of the annual retail trade survey. Clearly, this is an exceptional source for anyone looking to learn more about the retail sector. In addition, with the historical information found on the U.S. Census Bureau's website, you can look at historical trends in and across different sectors. Just to summarize, number one, gas stations and vending machines are considered retail. Still wrapping my head around that. Second, this data goes back as far as 1952, which can provide a deeper dive into trends over the decades. And lastly, when we recorded this, we just released 2020 arts data, but looking to accelerate the future release dates. If you found today's podcast informative and helpful, and you would like to learn more, please visit us at www.census.gov. If you would like to learn more about the arts data, please visit us at www.census.gov forward slash arts. Again, thank you for listening. We look forward to sharing more with you very soon.